Your Honour. I just have a few more brief questions. I don't think I stated for the record, Your Honour, initially, um, that, for, that I was Ms. David in appearing for BCG, and I apologise for that, and also to Mr Ali. Um, Mr Ali, I just, just I've asked you a few questions before morning tea in relation to the uh, a meeting whereby I suggested to you that you came in to the meeting, or sorry, that you questioned BCG1 at a time at one particular meeting. Have you had the opportunity to see BCG's statement since yesterday? I know you said yesterday you hadn't read it. No, I haven't. Okay. Um, could you be shown a copy of statement one, please, at paragraph 43? Could you please read that paragraph? That yeah, the first uh, paragraph forty-three. That is a statement of BCG. Um, read to myself, you mean? Yes, you could just yeah. read it to yourself. The first, the first, really, the first um, two sentences, or the first three sentences. The BCG suggests that that did happen, in fact. So I'm suggesting to you that that is that during the course of this process, that she was asked questions by each of you separately when you were alone with her, each of you separately. That's incorrect. Um, you haven't read the statement of BCG up until this point, have you? No. Is there a reason for that? Do I need to? I'm not sure. Well, well, do you not think that reading the statement of a person who has uh, made such an allegation, a victim of, of uh, child sexual abuse or sexual abuse, that would help to understand the position of a person such as BCG? I'm not sure what to say to that. I mean, that is something that the courts went through and dealt with at that time. What I'm asking you is, would not it assist you to understand the plight of a victim of sexual abuse? I, I, can, I can read what's on that page, and uh, I appreciate you allowing me that opportunity to do that, but... Mr... I'm not sure... What... Ali, well, I'm just simply suggesting to you, do you not agree with the proposition that it would assist you to understand how victims of sexual abuse feel if you actually took some time to <coughs> read statements from victims that were available to you? We, we have done that, or I have done that. But you didn't not want this, to agree. Not this particular one, but there have been other cases that have been recorded and how they felt and what circumstances they faced, and I appreciate um, we their just circumstances. Go, just more. Go to paragraph 44. You can see that on the screen? Yes. Can you read that for me, please? Yes. Now, you understand what she's saying? Yes. Do you now understand that... To require a young woman to confront three males who were friends of her father's to make allegations or bring allegations that her father has sexually abused her was a very difficult process. It was. It's not appropriate, is it? That's the guidelines that we follow. It's not appropriate. As a way of receiving allegations from a young woman about sexual assault by her father, do you think now that it's appropriate that she be required to confront three men who are friends of her father's and there's no one else present? I think under the circumstance and the guidelines, yes, I'd still feel it's appropriate because of the fact of what we represent. Leave aside the guidelines. You see what she's saying? 
you understand what she's saying? I understand what she's saying. Do you right. think it's appropriate, leave aside the guidelines, do you think it's appropriate to have a system which requires a woman, a young woman, when making allegations of sexual assault by her father, to speak with three men who are friends of her father's and no one else is present? Yes, it is appropriate. Why? She, she was requested or asked if she would like to do that and she was quite agreeable to doing that, how difficult it was for her. Thus, my reason for saying that she is a, a very courageous person in, in following through with that. But yes. she was requested if she would like to be part of the Judicial Committee to explain, and she agreed with that. Her feelings in that, in that instance it is, I recognise and I feel very much for what she had to go through even more so while I'm not in that situation, I, I do appreciate that. She had no choice. The only system that you made available to her if she was to pursue the allegations was this one, wasn't it? Yes, it was, but and we... There was just no choice. In your organisation, there was no choice. There is a choice, Your Honour. What's the choice? This choice is that she is asked to come, that nobody is ever forced to into that process. Very well. See the last sentence. I didn't really offer the full detail of the sexual abuse. Do you understand what she's saying? Yes. What she's saying is because she had to confront the three of you who were friends of her father, she felt unable to detail the full extent of the sexual abuse. You understand that? I understand that. You accept that as being a true position? On her, on her behalf, yes, I understand yeah. what she would have gone through. You that accept way. that that demonstrates a serious flaw in your process? No, I, I still maintain that because she had a choice, she, she didn't need to unless she, was, she wanted to come and explain what she was going through. Uh, we do not force her to do that. I know how difficult, I understand how difficult it was for her. Your church requires people to report allegations or experiences of misconduct by members of the church, doesn't it? True. Requires. So she had an obligation to report, didn't she? Yes, she could report it, but whether she chose to come into that particular process herself or just just simply she's requested to come into that room and, and be part of that process. How would she be faithful to her obligation to bring the allegation unless she came and spoke to you three men? Yes, that, how, is, a process, that is a process we need to take and perhaps uh, there, may, there may have been uh, maybe other ways in which that can happen but we still needed to understand and she she obviously wanted to because she approached uh, us to do that but if she was to Difficult. be faithful to her obligation to report the misconduct to the elders she had to confront the three men who'd been assembled didn't she with much reassurance yes i agree and you still think that's an appropriate process for a young woman who is bringing allegations of sexual assault by her father, do you? I, I believe it's a, it's a step in understanding um, the, the process of what happened. It's, I understand how difficult it was for her. But what she's saying to you is because of the way this process was conducted, she wasn't able to tell you all that she could have told you about what happened to her. Do you understand that? True, I understand that. So the three of you weren't actually receiving the whole story because the process wouldn't allow it. Do you understand that? I understand that too. Well, is that not suggesting to you there's a flaw in the process? No, what, what suggests to me that we become aware of, of how difficult it can be and try and be as patient without, without any force applied but being patient and kind and, and showing some compassion in that regard, hopefully, then that, that may help a little bit in doing that. But she, we understand she has gone through a terrible, terrible ordeal. Well, that's undoubtedly true. Did you show her the full compassion that you could show her at the time? We believe we did, yes. But still, you realise she wasn't able to give you the full detail? Yes. Initially, that was the case, but as the process went on, it, it got to the stage where, where she could talk about it to the extent that she could, and it was 
commendable that, that she could do that. And it wasn't just the first time. There was probably a number of times that she did that, and that's why I say that she continued to do what she could to help us appreciate that, the gravity of that, uh, of that horrible act. Thank you. Um, you've described BCG as courageous and as brave. I do. And you have just stated uh, in your evidence that that enabled her to ultimately give her story through that process. Any young uh, at her age, yes. it would be. Yes, I admire, I admire that. Do you agree that a person who was a timid person would have absolutely no hope of finding a voice within that process, would they? I doubt that. They would have no chance, would they? No, no, that's not what I meant. Well, well isn't it the case that you need to be brave, you need to be courageous to even get to a point where you can tell your story in your committee process? Well, from BCG's own expressions there, how difficult it was for her, yeah. that's something that, that we want to realise even more so, yeah. but it doesn't... It doesn't uh, prevent a person from continuing to come forward, and she did. But do you not agree that such a process would cause a timid person great fear and very likely result in them not voicing the abuse that they are experiencing? I can't answer that. I'm not sure what, what a person may feel in being timid. Each personality is different, but I'm sure that some way could be found to, to overcome that and, and relate whatever needs to be in that case. But isn't it the case that it's most likely that you would never hear about it because they would be too timid to step forward? This is, this is a decision that each person takes. I, I just do not know how to answer that question. Nothing further. Thank you. Yes, Mr Coyne. Thank you, Your Honour. Um, my name is Coyne. I represent Mr Ali and others in this proceedings. Mr Ali, in 1989, how long had you known BCG? I was in the congregation baptised in 1981. I'm not sure if they were there at that time, but it would be probably just a couple of years. How well did you know BCG at that time? We didn't socialise to that degree. We, we were part of a congregation, a group that were always meeting together two, three times a week. In 1989, was BCG engaged? I think she was engaged. And that was to um, BCJ? Yes. Did you know him? We knew him. What role, if any, did BCJ have in supporting... Um, BCG in these proceedings? He was there all the time. She confided in him and he always made himself available during the process. So whilst not present within the room, he was on and around the premises? He was just outside that door, yes. Now, I want to ask you about these notes. Do you still have a copy of them in front of you? Yes. Now, those notes were prepared by yourself? Yes. Is it your handwriting throughout it? It appears to be my handwriting. Were they all prepared on the same day on, or on different days? Different days. Okay. Um, the first date that appears there on page one is the 1st of June 1989. Do you agree with that? That's correct, yes. And the last date uh, at page 15 being the 19th of July, 1989. Yes, agree? yes. Okay, now, it's headed Notes of Investigating Committee. That's correct. Was the purpose of that particular investigating committee to yeah. um, investigate allegations of adultery against BCH? Correct. Is it the case that the first three pages of those notes relate to that investigation? Perhaps a bit more. Yes. more. And then on page four, 
allegations have been made in relation to the subject of these proceedings. Correct. Then at page five, it uh, details his response to those allegations. And it says, hold on, just get the. It says, when faced and hears allegations, denies all. Yes? He did, yes. It says, says all part of parental training and, yes, kissed on mouth and hugged tightly. But that's all. It says that BCG asks questions about subject. And then it says, on looking into a shower, walking past perhaps, and remembers BCI was home. It says, chasing BCG to another person's place, playing with bucket of water. And it says, breaking down bath door, hurry to bathe as glasses may have been in there, despite nakedness of BCG. So that's your record of his response to the specific allegations at that time. Because that's the case, yeah. In that throughout that meeting, at all times, he denied the allegations. He did. And gave an explanation of them. That's correct. Okay. If we then move over to the next page, page six, <clears throat> you'll see about two thirds of the way down, it says, end of meeting. Yes. On the next page, page seven, halfway down it says that day, then after that it says that night. So that, that's detailing ongoing investigation carried out by the committee, is that correct? That's correct. Now, if we could bring up tab three, please. So, is tab three the response of your original investigation, which was into his alleged adultery? That's correct. And that's your result of that? That's the result. Uh, and it recommended this fellowship? It does. Okay. And continuing on with your notes, uh, on the 8th, on page 8, it's got a date of the 3rd of June. And then also at the bottom of the page on the 3rd of June, it says go and see another person um, who is not connected with these allegations in any case. Is that correct? That's correct. And at page 9, it says 31st of May, uh, met as a judi judicial committee. Uh, with the father and with that other person. That's correct, yes. Oh, by the way, the numbering of the pages, is that your numbering? I believe it could be, yes. I'm, I'm not sure. And at page 10, okay, it's the date 12.6.89. Correct? That's correct. Page 11, the date at the bottom is the 17th of June, met with uh, <laughs> oh, doing the best. BCG and her mother. Yes. Okay. date is the 28th of June 1989. Actually, I can't read that. Yes. Uh, you met as a committee with the North CNS elders. Yep. Is that right? North Cairns. That's yes, abbreviation. North Cairns. Yep. And halfway down that page, 
met on the 10th of July to discuss this fellowship. That's correct. Okay. Just move forward a few pages. Now, at the bottom of page 14, Dr. Jason Morrison, Theologist again. I just want to say thank you for watching the videos and I uh, hope you got plenty of uh, self-rediscovery and freedom out of it. If you watched it on YouTube, please share or like. Um, maybe even comment. If you watched it on Facebook, like, comment, share. Um, but most of all, get out and live. This isn't a rehearsal. You've got a one-off life. Don't let your loyalty and your faithfulness blind you to the life that you should be experiencing. Till the next video, Thank you for watching and bye for now.